And as Amber said, my name is Derek Rainey. I'm the Small Business Development Coordinator here at the, here at the City of Little Rock. And without further ado, we're going to welcome to the stage for our first session, Successful Joint Venture Highlight, a conversation with Dexter Dorn and Jake Napos. Uh, this will be moderated by Jay Cheshire, by, who's the President and CEO of the Little Rock Regional Chamber. Uh, please welcome to the stage Dexter Doyne, President and CEO of Doyne Construction Company, Jake Napos, CEO of Napos Construction, and Jay Cheshire, President and CEO of the Little Rock Regional Chamber. And if you will, gentlemen, uh, there's a button next to you, and that will engage your microphone. Can you all hear us okay? Yeah. All right. Good morning. That's good. Oh, okay. Marvels of technology. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Well, now that wasn't very <laughs> joyful. Derek, Kendra, Amber, they just, they, they just set the stage. Let's all have smiles. Be happy. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it a blessing? And every time I talk with Dexter Doyne, we talk about blessings. But isn't it a blessing to be able to come together and talk with a couple of, of gentlemen whose companies have had a long time um, partnership in bettering each other? And we always say in economic development, success is where preparedness meets opportunity. And so part of this is if you don't know, then it's hard to be prepared. And so this entire conference is designed to help first of all, make you better prepared, and secondly, give you examples of not only people that you can work with, but of people who have worked together for a long period of time um, to show you the way, the pathway that this success actually can take. So with that, I want to, you, uh, you've already been introduced, I'm not going to do all of that again. Jake Nabholtz, third generation amazing construction company, uh, doing work all over, all over the country. Uh, Dexter Doyen, also longtime construction company, amazing work not only here but around the country as well. So guys, tell us how 30 years ago you got together. Dexter, you want to kick it off? Okay. Well, um, 30 years ago, I'm not even sure if Jake was even born at that time, but... <laughs> But um, um, our relationship started really as a, a subcontracting opportunity. I believe that um, during construction, we had a project, and NAP hosts have separate, several different divisions that they specialize in, and we hired them as a subcontractor to do a portion of a general contract that we were doing. And, and just found them to be, you know, an honorable company, um, did what they said they were going to do. And um, from that subcontracting opportunity that they had with us, you know, I began to have conversations with, uh, gosh, the second generation uh, leadership of the company about other joint venture opportunities, um, one of which that we went after was the Altel Arena when it was originally built. And if you all know some of the history of that, Joe, Jake and I still talk about that was the best job that we never had. So. <laughs> we say that about every job. We <laughs> but, but it has been a, a, a long and satisfying relationship that even continues today. Yeah, I think what's neat about our relationship is, is over 30 years, we've done just about, is there any procurement people in the room? So we've done about every type of contractual relationship together. Uh, Napholtz has worked for Doyne as a subcontractor. Doyne has worked for Napholtz as a subcontractor. Uh, we've done design build work together where we hire the architects. Uh, we've done construction management together. We've done construction management at risk together. Design build. Um, we've done formal joint ventures. We've had a very successful mentor proje relationship. You can talk about here in a second. Um, but the thing about it is, it's just it's a relationship that's based on trust. So if you look back over that 30 years, if you count all the work that we've done together, um, including like small projects, that we've probably done over 100 projects. So that counts some job order contracts uh, that are, what, probably a couple thousand dollars, all the way up to projects that are well over $100 million. And I think it's really cool because Mason Doyne is now coming along behind 
his father and, and obviously really engaged in running the business. And yet we see that what, what, what the American dream looks like. It's, it's literally sitting over there. I'm, I'm over here by myself. They're over there. They're the, the American dream. Um, so I, I really encourage you guys to talk with them. We're going to have some questions and answers here in, uh, in a few minutes. Before we get to that, though, what do you, not only looking back, because things have changed, for today, what do you look for in other people to create a joint venture relationship? Yeah, um, I think it's just like any business relationship. You've got to find somebody that you know, that you like, trust. Those are the key elements to any good relationship. Um, you've got to know them. You've got to know their character. You've got to know their culture. Make sure those things blend. Uh, you've got to make sure you like working with that person. Construction, I'll tell you guys, is a very stressful business. It's a lot easier if you like the people that you're working with. Um, frankly, that last thing is probably the most important, and that's trust. Uh, I have 100% trust in Dexter and vice versa because uh, it's very important because he can speak for the joint venture at any time, vice versa. Yeah, and, and our joint ventures are, are bona fide uh, contractual agreements. You know, this is, this is no under table deal. Everything is, is open book for our clients because, you know, as you all have probably experienced, there's been sham organizations and relationships out there, and, and ours is, is not the case. And um, uh, another thing that, that makes us work well together is that our cultures are very similar in how we treat our clients, how we treat our, our associates and workers, and, and how we treat each other. And, and that is what makes for a good long-term relationship. I remind Jake that um, uh, Joint ventures is like a marriage. <laughs> so we've been married here for, for 30 years or so, and so far it's been, it's been working out. So I'm curious, um, not being in the construction business, and I suspect some of our audience are, would be curious about this as well, how does this start? The, do you look for other companies with specific talents, initiatives, abilities, how does the whole process begin to create the joint venture? Well, I, often it, uh, we have a reciprocal relationship. That's, that's first of all. So we're, we're both out looking for opportunities. And, and oftentimes, Jake will call me and says, Dexter, we have an opportunity. And, and it'll be a particular project that, that's coming down the pike, and, and we'll discuss that, uh, well, is a joint venture a way to approach this opportunity? And we, we, we continue our discussion to see, first, is, is the job a good fit for our companies? You know? and, and secondly, is it going to be an opportunity to be a profitable job? You know, we, we have enough losers to deal with. So, <laughs> so, so we, we discuss the opportunity, and then if it's a go, then we start putting the parts and pieces in the team together. Yeah, so when we're putting those parts and pieces together, too, it's just some real honest conversations about who has the best relationship with the client. Well, that's the firm that should probably take the lead on it. Oftentimes it's Dexter, oftentimes sometimes it's us, too. It just depends on the client. And also the type of projects, too, uh, will dictate who takes the lead. Um, some people think because Napoles might be the larger firm that we're better at things. That's not true. Dexter's firm can run circles around us on certain things. Are you all familiar with FAR, like a federal project, federal acquisition regulations? His firm can run circles around us when it comes to that. Um, oftentimes, we'll even call him to help us guide us through those process, even if it's not a project that we're working on together. And that actually kind of answers what my next question was going to be, which how do you determine who does what? Mm -hmm. any, any good examples of that as well, Dexter? Well, uh, again, it, de it depends on the project and, and who's taking the lead on it. Um, and there's been, been many times where, where Dorn Construction will, will bring the opportunity to, to Jake, and then we assign you know, the project managers, the coordinators, to uh, execute the project as it, as it goes forward. Now and the, go. No, so the other thing I'd add to that too, Jay, it depends on the staffing. So in construction, it's all about how you can staff a project, and the timing of a project will dictate that. But we're having a lot of candid conversations about, okay, which superintendents do you have available? Which project managers do we have available? And then the goal is, is that you'll blend those teams. 
uh, we always have this rule that we try to operate under is, is that if you walk on one of our joint venture jobs, you can't tell who works for who, right? You don't know if they work for Napoles or work for Doyne. We want the staffs to be blended in all one cohesive team. I mean, it takes a lot of work to make that happen. There's always challenges. How do you deal with a challenge in this type of relationship when you have two different companies trying to do the same thing? Uh, well, first, we, we discussed the issue. Um, you know, on, on a, two or three projects ago, we, we had an issue. At, um, we were building the, the science building at UCA, and, and one of my dorm construction personnel was, was not, you know, he was not performing to my expectations, and that was brought to my attention. And uh, I, I had a discussion uh, first with, with, uh, yeah. with David, <laughs> which is Jake's dad. He, That's always fun, by the way. Yeah, I know. And, but then I took action, and, and I gave my employee an opportunity to improve. That didn't happen, so he was replaced with someone who, who did even a better job. And so we just bring those, those issues to the table, and, and we deal with them, because the most important thing is getting that job accomplished on time, on schedule, on schedule, within budget, and with quality work. And that goes back to something Dexter said earlier about culture. You know, our culture is aligned where we're just going to pick up the phone, have that honest conversation, then get it fixed. So when you're working on a job like that, obviously um, the, the, the two different teams have to communicate together. And Jake, you talked about being able to walk on that job site and not know who's working for whom. How do your people manage that process to make it successful? Because obviously that's really where the rubber meets the road. It's in that scenario where that person may or may not be doing what they need to be doing, you have that conversation. How do you create the communication at that level from a trust perspective yeah. that then allows you to, to resolve issues? Um, and Dexter jumping here, but I think the advantage that we have now is that we've been doing it so long that our teams know each other so well. So it makes that blending process a lot easier. Earlier on, it wasn't like that. Um, there, there was a whole lot of filling out, trying to get to know everybody's capabilities, because everybody approaches the job differently. Um, you know, there were several times Dexter would send his team members to some of our development programs. So they're hearing how we do things and things like that. And on the flip side, you heard me talk about it earlier, his team would come in and guide some of our team through stuff that we didn't know. So once you kind of get that mutual respect that everybody knows what they're doing, that blending is a lot easier. And, and one thing that, that we, we've done numerous things together as a company, for instance, you know, Jake mentioned that we have more expertise in federal contracting, and uh, gosh, what, 15, 20 years ago, we actually brought in one of, one of their employees as an intern on a federal project we were working at Pine Bluff Arsenal. Um, Dilly Mayfield was yep. his name, and he has continued, he still works for Napoles now, but he got his feet wet in, in understanding federal, federal contracting, and, and because we have that that integration of employees and relationships, when projects come up, we're working with some of the same people that we've had relationships with, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. So that makes it really, really easy to execute the project when you know who you're, who you're working with. And I think that's important, especially even maybe more so for small businesses, because oftentimes they think it's just them and that whatever the issue is, they have to resolve or they have to fix or they have to, to be successful with. So I think this is a great example of asset and talent allocation. You know that you're really good at this piece. You know they're really good at that piece, and you combine efforts. It's, it's you know, a lot of people think that your world is all about competition, when in reality, it truly is collaboration to create success. Yeah, now we, we talk about this a lot, and, and everybody knows this, Arkansas is very much a relationship state. And those relationships, when you cultivate them, do the right thing, they'll pay dividends. And this is an example of that relationship that, that's worked out very well over the last 30 years. Now you talked about this too, about blending teams and how you hold each other accountable. I should tell you guys this too. Uh, when we're doing our monthly project reviews, which is a process that we do every month to go through the health of a job, it's not done by my dad or somebody on our team. It's done jointly with Dexter and the whole, whole leadership team together. So everybody's involved with that from day one. So before I open it up to see what type of questions we have from our, our friends here in the audience, 
while not everyone has children, those that do may not admit it, but they have a favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> You've worked a hundred plus projects together. Tell us who your favorite child was. Good luck, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're asking a, a lot, Jay, but, um, you know, I, one project that, that probably sticks out, uh, I would say, would be the new Southwest Little Rock High School, yeah. because that, first of all, it was the first high school that has been built in Little Rock District in 50 years, number one. Number two, of course, we all know that it was desperately needed in an in a underserved part of our community and it was a it was a you know it was a large project it was a hundred million dollar project and and so that one you know and it had you know its challenges with weather and with delivery of materials and remember that uh, um, we we did that um, right at the we were COVID. in the middle of COVID that's right so we had all those challenges to overcome so I, I would say I would put that one near the top of the list. Yeah, yeah. I would. Too. I'd agree with that or the art center, yeah. just because it's. I don't know if y'all been to new the art center, but it's just remarkable. It's just one of those once in a lifetime projects. Yeah. Um, and right. again, the same reasons that Dexter talked about. It's one of those that changes your community. You know, it's really really cool. We we've, we've been engaged with Southwest, uh, with the academies of Central Arkansas. Christy Barr is here in the room that has been helping lead that that work for all these years. And you talk about the art center. It, they're each iconic in their own way and having an amazing impact on the, not only the community, but in, in this case, the entire state and beyond. Questions from our friends in the audience. I'm sorry, Dexter. Okay, before we open it up, I do want to mention one thing, though, Jake, that you, you touched on earlier that probably really accelerated our relationship, our growth together, and, and it was probably one of the most beneficial things we did. I mention this because we have Ms. Adrian Brown here from the SBA, Jake, and that was a program called the, the Mentor Protege Program, and it, it was sponsored by, by SBA, NAP Holtz, Dorn. We created the first Mentor Protege Program in, in, uh, in the state of Arkansas, and, and what that does, it, 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 it's, it creates a long-term relationship between majority companies, minority companies, where we really begin to learn their systems of operation, you know, involved in their, their um, internal meetings. It, it really gave Dawn Construction an insight on how things really work at a higher level. So, so that program in itself was really one of the biggest benefits that, um, um, that has helped both of our companies. And, um, and I just want to mention that while we have the SBA lady here today. Thank you. Also, questions from the audience? Okay, don't make me start asking questions. Yes, have sir. A, a yes, sir. Comment card as well. Hold it, we're bringing you a microphone. Would you say that it's more profitable to go after private sector contracts and city contracts as they pay you out of a budget and not taxpayer dollars? No, I mean, um, no. Our, our fees on both projects are virtually the same. Yeah, I, th I think the, the difference is, is, is in a down economy, there's typically more public type work. So you gotta have that good mix of private and public work. A really good question, yes sir. Um, what would you say is the best way for the next gen to enter the construction space? I, I didn't understand. Next you generation. That? What's the best way for the next generation to enter the construction space? So I, I'll start that in Dexter. Hang on, hang on. So since Jake's so young, he's going to interpret. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I just look young. Uh, Actually, we are, we are putting a lot of focus on that as an industry about how to get young people involved, um, whether it's through mentorship relationships, whether we're doing youth apprenticeship outreach at high schools, intern programs, all that type of stuff. Now, you've also got some folks that are, that are wanting to start their own company at a young age. 
So my advice to them would be find someone like Dexter or us and get that relationship going to where you've got somebody that you can lean on to help guide you through that process. Whether it's how do you do insurance, how do you set up your bonding program, how do you hire people, how do you set up all job costs and things like that. Uh, that's the best way. Don't try to recreate the will. Just find somebody that knows it and, and get that relationship going. And I think you'll find, because uh, you, we see this in a whole lot of business opportunity in that there are other folks out there that want to help. And working with someone, working for someone, learning the different aspects, whether it starts with a trade uh, that then builds itself up to actual uh, management, uh, you know, it, it's hard to manage something you don't understand. And, yeah. and I think um, in today's world, that's, that's, well, it doesn't matter if it's accounting or if it's rocket science or if it's construction. It's still that, that if you don't understand what it is you're trying to manage, it's, it's very difficult to do so. Good question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hello, Washington uh, People Trust Community Loan Fund, People Trust Community Federal Credit Union. I was wondering, for small businesses, um, is there a, I mean, of course, you guys have been around a long time and do great work, uh, but is there any threshold as far as how much a small business need to spend on a project to engage you all? Repeat the last part of your well, question. I said, is, is, there, is there a threshold as far as like, because I know you said that you do projects all the way from, uh, I think up to $100 million, but of course with the need for job creation and, and quality commercial spaces in the community, uh, you know, there's a huge need for your services. Yeah. So I was just wondering, like, is there a threshold or, or, or anything with your <laughs> projects? Well, I, I tell my clients, I'll build them a doghouse if they, <laughs> if they want to. And, and, and the reason for that, though, is some of my largest projects for doing construction has originated with one of the smallest projects. And so you, you don't turn down any opportunities. And if it is something that, that's out of our wheelhouse or we can't get to it at that time, I always try to give that client a referral to someone who can address you know, their needs immediately. Yeah, no, there's kind of a misconception that Napoles only does large projects, and that's not true. Uh, we do several, several projects that are five, ten, fifteen thousand $15,000. Thank it's you. interesting, and, and Jake made, made comment about this a few minutes ago. Um, Arkansas is such a, a, a relational state. Don't ever turn down the opportunity to create a relationship because you never know where it's going, where it's going to lead. Good question. This Next is a one. question that was submitted. Um, how do we shift the narrative of minority and prime versus sub and prime how do we begin to shift that narrative where minority contractors become the primes as well as the reverse to majority and minority yeah oh i'll i'll start that one you know you heard us reference that we've done probably over 100 projects together counting some of the job order contract stuff the majority of those dexter's a lead on You mentioned well, yeah, a SBA mentorship program. How does that program work, or where do you go to find information? So if I'm trying to set up my own business, do I go to, like, a website? Oh, okay. Is there, like, a website that lists? You want to talk about this? And another, an, another avenue, because you, you'll be surprised at how many avenues there are to get to those kinds of conversations. Um, we at the Chamber of Commerce have used uh, Dexter and others through the SCORE program, where we have what's called SCORE Business Hours, where any, any business can, can make an appointment with one of those uh, typically retired business people just to sit down and ask questions, and it not cost you anything and get some really good advice, and then they're not going to, to provide legal or, or you know that type of, of, of advice because obviously there's some liability in regard to that, but just sitting down with a, a Dexter or a, a, a Jake or anyone for that matter who's been there, just to ask those questions that you don't necessarily want to ask in, in front of a big crowd with a microphone, 
is really, really helpful. So take those opportunities. Uh, Derek, I want to go back to the to your question again and add a little more information about the, the minor, minority majority arrangements. Um, I know through the SBA mentor protege program, it was mandated that you know in this case during construction take the lead role on the project because it would it would have been assigned to us through that program, and that lead role is is of course anything beyond fifty one percent having control of it. And, um, and again, that gave us the leadership, decision-making, handle the books, you know, uh, to make, us a, make it a legitimate opportunity. And, you know, it worked out real well. The projects we did were all over the region. Uh, for instance, we renovated a jail in Bryan, Texas. And um, just so happened, Navhost was doing a job in Houston. Texas, which is about 35 miles from Brian. So again, it, it made sense to use my mentor in that program to execute that project. It made logistical sense, made economic sense, and it was a successful project. Great example. Uh, just to follow up to that, I was submitted another comment card. Uh, could you talk about your experience with the SBA 8A program outside of the mentorship relationship and okay. program? And for those of you who don't know, the SBA 8A program is um, it's a long-term program for minority contractors, not just construction, but any goods and services that you can offer to a client where, which they provide, um, they provide counseling, they provide guidance in growing your business, and it provides sole source contracting opportunities with that government agency. So an example would be we did several projects with the U.S. Bureau of Prisons over in um, Marion, Arkansas, and Bryan, Texas, El Paso, Texas. And that was executed through this 8A, 8A program where we had the opportunity to negotiate a sole source contract to execute those projects with those government agencies. So I, I would advise any of you to investigate that. And, and remember, it is not only for construction. If you sell widgets, if you have a cleaning service or, or, or whatever business that you're in that a government agency can use, that 8A program will allow you to negotiate projects with them. And it is all about growing your company and developing it because when you, it's a nine-year program and they want you to be able to survive after that program. We graduated from the program in 1999, and so by the grace of God, we're still here and still have our relationship with, with NAVHO. So it's certainly something that you want to in investigate. Yes, sir. Just really quick, and this is for Dexter. You know, a lot of people have that dream of having their own business, but can you discuss some of the sacrifices you made to get where you're up on a stage uh, and being able to talk to us and tell us all the different lessons? Well, um, first, <laughs> it, it, first, of course, it takes commitment. It, it, it's whatever business you're in, it, it, it needs to be something that you want to do. And, uh, and then the, some of the sacrifices that you have to make is delayed gratification. In construction, it's all about, you know, having abundant capacity and having the financial and human resources to execute the work. So, you know, for the first six years of Doran Construction Company, you know, I didn't take a salary. I, I put back those resources to, to build that abundant capacity to have resources. Luckily, my wife had a job. <laughs> and, and then my daughter, Anjale, who's here today, she comes along. And you know that for any of you parents, you know that changes the dynamics of your, of your income. So, you know, you have to be willing to make those kind of sacrifices in order to get your, your, your company established. And then the, the other rule and, and advice that I was given to me is pay your taxes. <laughs> and and, and that, is some, that can be one of the hardest checks to write, but you, you have to remain legally legitimate. I see a lot of bankers here. 
They are happy when you have to pay taxes as, as a business. And then they'll turn around and say, hey, I'll lend you the money to pay your taxes. <laughs> Am I right, Kim? <laughs> That's right. Because that means you're a profitable business. That means you're making money and you're successful. Great question. Yes, ma'am. I know you all said you mentor with each other, but do you all ever come out to the community, maybe like to high schools, to try to recruit young people who find themselves not motivated to go to college or to pursue professional careers? Can they come to you to say, hey, can I get some on-the-job training to get in this line of work? It happens all the time, and not only in high school, even at the college level. Uh, Jake and I spoke to a, a, a real estate development class at UALR. UALR. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And so what we've found in the last couple of years is we've separated our two programs. So you got those that are on the college track, but we're really trying to get more youth apprenticeship programs in high school just to get them interested in construction and see what it's about. Because unfortunately, just a lot of people aren't exposed to the business. And so when both of us, uh, Southwest Little Rock High School is a good example. When we were building that, we had interns from that school district that were able to come and work on that project. And interestingly enough, I talked about the academies of Central Arkansas. Now, all 11 or 11 of the 12 high schools in Pulaski County have now adopted that framework of learning. And it's where businesses are going in, starting at the ninth grade level, to give young people an opportunity to see what is possible and then through internships through uh, even summer jobs giving them the opportunity to learn that and graduate from high school both with um, certifications that are recognized by industry whether it be construction IT healthcare, whatever it might be as well as concurrent college credit so we're in fact last week we had yet another announcement in Jacksonville at Jacksonville High School um, Stay tuned for what we expect to be an exciting uh, announcement for Mills in, in the not so distant future because getting these business people engaged with those students, but not, not just as they come in and speak at one class, it's why does geometry matter in construction? And when you make it relevant, so in something that they're interested in, then they'll learn it. And interestingly enough, and I, I'm, I don't want to still Christie's thunder because we're, we're announcing some of this, but in just the first year, first two years rather, of implementation in the Pulaski County School District, um, tardiness has gone down, in-school suspensions have gone down because kids are interested in learning. And to your point, that's, what, that's when we truly create more of these people. Good question. Anything else? I know we're running out of time. Um, and so I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. Is there one thing that we haven't talked about that you think this group of people or any potential entrepreneur, small business owner needs to know to go to that next step? I mean, I'll kick it off. I think there's always this hesitancy to make that phone call. You know, there's always like, well, they probably won't take my phone call or maybe it's not a good fit. Don't hesitate. Jump in. Try it. Um, and I remember this when I moved back from Oklahoma about 15, no, about 12 years ago. Uh, we were going after a project and I remember thinking, I wonder if Dexter would be interested in working on this one together. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, maybe he wouldn't, maybe he wouldn't. And as soon as I made that phone call, it was a great conversation and then we were off and running. And, and, you know, one of the other things is always have mutual respect for each other and, and, your, and your companies and what you do. And, and our relationship, I, I tell people all the time that uh, Naphos and, and Dorn, we are, we are compadres and competitors. <laughs> He's a general contractor, I'm a general contractor. And um, um, which means that we may be bidding on jobs against each other while me. having joint ventures uh, going over here. And uh, when we were interviewing for the Central High School job that we just broke ground on a couple of days ago, we're sitting in the interview with the owners, the Little Rock School District, and uh, during my comments, I let them know that um, Dorn Construction had bid against a job uh, with Navholt the couple of days before, and we got the job. But Jake didn't know about it at the time. So, so, so we're in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we're interviewing together as a joint venture. That's right. And That's right. I find out in the interview during our opening comments that he drummed us a couple of days before. <laughs> So. But that's the kind of relationship that, that we have. And, and, and they are a billion dollar company. And I remind Jake that Dorn Construction Company has been responsible for helping them become <laughs> a billion dollar company. That's right. <laughs> he does. So we've heard about culture. We've heard about trust. We've heard about integrity. We've heard about communication. And we've heard about never miss the opportunity. And I think that sums this up. Because whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, or next year, you're this far away from your next joint venture. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.